This is USBI News, your Virgin Islands connection. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for USBI News. I'm Emily Matson. Investigators say two people are dead after human smugglers dumped at least 18 people in the dark in the waters east of St. John early Sunday morning. The U.S. Coast Guard said only 16 of the migrants made it to shore alive. St. John residents actually called Virgin Islands police around 4.15 in the morning Sunday to report people in distress in the water and many others coming on to shore. Rescue crews arrived and searched the waters, eventually recovering the bodies of a man and a woman. Investigators believe the migrants boarded a vessel in St. Martin and the smugglers dumped them 100 yards or more from the shore, forcing them to swim in the dark waters. The alleged smuggling vessel was not found. The would-be migrants included five women, five men, and a child from Venezuela, a woman from the Dominican Republic, a man from Colombia and from Haiti, and two men from Iran. They were processed by U.S. Customs and Border Protection. And the investigation, including many agencies, is ongoing. Also on St. John, police say a woman is caught red-handed trying to steal thousands of dollars from a man's bank account. 24-year-old Delika Moses is facing several charges, including grand larceny, forgery, and fraud. Detectives with the VIPD Economic Crimes Unit got a report from a man who said three checks were stolen from his checkbook, which was located at his work. Investigators determined Moses stole the checks and endorsed, forged, and cashed two of them, totaling $2,000. Then back on Friday, August 19th, a bank contacted VIPD when Moses showed up to try to cash a third check in the amount of $3,000. Patrol officers showed up and arrested her at the bank. We have some sad news to bring you now. The staff at Coral World Ocean Park are devastated after the sudden death of a baby dolphin that was born just a few weeks ago. Ping, a 23-year-old Atlantic bottlenose dolphin, gave birth to a calf on July 29th. The results of a necropsy revealed no specific cause of his death. The park's general curator says its staff built deep relationships with the animals and this loss of the calf has hit everyone very hard, especially for those who nurtured and cared for mother and calf for the past few weeks. According to those at Coral World, Ping and the male calf were being monitored by staff 24-7 since Ping went into labor. The calf was nursing well and was visibly filling out. His death was a shock to everybody at the ocean park. He simply did not resurface while swimming. Ping is reportedly doing well, and they're watching her closely. The park's veterinarian said, unfortunately, calf mortality is not uncommon in the first few weeks. It'll be several weeks, though, until all test results are back, which may offer more insight into the exact cause of his death. Hmm. The Virgin Islands Police Department has a warning for drivers. Drive sober or get pulled over. They're taking part in the impaired driving national enforcement mobilization effort called Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over Enforcement Campaign. It's been in effect across the nation, running from August 17th until September 5th through the Labor Day weekend. And the Virgin Islands Office of Highway Safety is working alongside the VIPD and the Department of Transportation's National Highway Safety Traffic Administration to decrease impaired driving throughout the territory, which they say is one of the deadliest and most often committed yet preventable crimes and a serious safety concern in the Virgin Islands community. VI Police Commissioner Ray Martinez says, quote, our priority is to keep people safe, so we are asking everyone to party with a plan. If they know they will be out drinking, our community members need to commit to com keeping our roads free of drunk drivers so that everyone can have a safe, fun-filled end of summer and enjoy Labor Day weekend. He added, remember, drive sober or get pulled over. And drunk driving continues to cut short thousands of lives each year. It's a tragedy which got worse during the pandemic and continues to head in the wrong direction. Deborah Alfaron has the government's latest statistics about traffic fatalities and more on the nationwide law enforcement campaign. A teenage girl died in Texas this month when a pickup truck plowed into her home. Police say the driver was drunk. Justice for me! In Michigan, a driver was charged with killing college student Bailey Broderick while under the influence. 
She was sunshine and amazing. She was just amazing. Traffic deaths are on the rise for the third straight year. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration estimates more than 9,500 people died in crashes in the first quarter of this year alone. That's about 7% more than the same period last year and the highest number in two decades. About a third of all crashes are consistently due to driving while impaired. Almost everyone knows of someone killed in an impaired driving crash. Administrator Stephen Cliff says the trend worsened in the first year of the pandemic when more than 11,000 Americans died because of impaired driving, equivalent to the population of the entire city of Cocoa Beach, Florida. When everyday life came to a halt in March 2020, risky behaviors skyrocketed and traffic fatalities spiked. We had hoped these trends were limited to 2020, but sadly, they aren't. Starting now through Labor Day, safety officials are launching their annual Drive Sober campaign and increasing law enforcement to try and cut down on impaired driving. Megan Carter lost her twin brother in a drunk driving crash when they were 19. Jonathan's life was stolen that evening. My parents were robbed of their son. Now with Mothers Against Drunk Driving, She's working to create a future with no more victims. Despite solid jobs numbers, other segments of the U.S. economy are lagging behind. A once booming housing market has now seen home sales drop for a sixth straight month with both mortgage rates and home prices rising. And retail spending is flat, with inflation taking its toll. Al Spar has the latest on where this economy may be headed. An economic mixed bag, leaving analysts scratching their heads. We're still a bit confused about where this economy is going. The economy is neither sort of plunging nor soaring. It's kind of holding there in the middle. Bringing changes to where Americans fill their shopping bags. We try to go from store to store and get, you know, whatever is cheaper. Inflation causing Kohl's to slash its financial forecast and driving more high-income consumers to stores like Walmart. People are really price focused right now regardless of income level. U.S. retail sales were flat last month with Americans shifting small savings from falling gas prices to other necessities, while housing sales are plummeting for the sixth month in a row. Well, several experts now have said that the housing market is in a recession. At the same time, home prices are up nearly 11 percent from a year ago, just as rising mortgage rates squeeze out more buyers. What the Federal Reserve has been trying to do is raise interest rates, in fact, to slow things down. And guess what? It's working. As the Fed tries to rein in inflation, the Biden administration pointing to its newly passed Inflation Reduction Act and a solid jobs market. We're seeing important signs of resilience in this economy. First time unemployment claims dropping for the first time in three weeks, down to just 250,000. In Washington, Alice Barr. In just about two weeks out from Labor Day, the summer's last big travel weekend, airline tickets are up more than 20% from last year. So to help soften that blow, the Biden administration is ordering airlines to help customers recoup their costs when flights are delayed and canceled, as we've seen so much this summer. And it really has been a summer of airline meltdowns. So the Transportation Department is warning airlines to improve their customer service policies or the government will order changes to compensate passengers for delays or cancellations. Tom Costello reports. After receiving billions in taxpayer support during the pandemic, the nation's airlines are tonight under intense pressure. Improve their customer service or the government could soon impose tough new passenger rights. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. So now you're kind of laying down the law for the airlines. They can either pony up on their own or you're going to enforce this for them. That's right. I'm giving them an opportunity right now. Uh, we can do more rulemakings and even more enforcement. In a letter to airline CEOs, Buttigieg writes, the level of disruption Americans have experienced this summer is unacceptable. Since Memorial Day weekend, 23% of U.S. flights delayed an average of 52 minutes. 2.2% of flights canceled, most in June. Contributing factors, weather and air traffic control problems. But the FAA insists airlines get most of the blame for booking passengers on flights they didn't have the pilots for. Now the DOT wants airlines to provide refunds if a domestic flight is changed or delayed more than three hours. Hotel accommodations for overnight delays. 
And with confusing airline rules on refunds and voucher policies, the DOT will roll out a new website Labor Day weekend, posting each airline's policies. We want to make sure very clearly spelled out so that passengers know what they're getting when they buy a ticket. The airline industry insists carriers strive to provide the highest level of customer service and look forward to working with the DOT to continue providing transparency for the traveling public. With Labor Day, Thanksgiving and Christmas travel ahead, mounting pressure to avoid a summer repeat.